in the direction of summon. Um, so you can um, be standing uh, in your driveway and uh, just tap the, 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 the summon button um, from the pull-down menu on your phone, and the car will open the garage door, uh, come to you, and then close the garage door behind it. Um, and then you can also unsummon or park the car, um, and again, just sort of do the pull-down menu, tap, one quick tap, and uh, the car will uh, go to the garage, uh, open the door if it's not open, um, uh, otherwise just go right in, and then close the garage door behind it. Um, so uh, it, it's just a baby step in the direction of summon, but <clears throat> ultimately um, I, the, you'll, you'll be able to summon your car from anywhere, uh, the, anywhere where there's land bridge, anywhere but the car can actually physically get to you. Um, so I, I actually think, and, and um, you know, I might be slightly optimistic on this, but I, I think that within two years, you'll be able to summon your car from across the country. Um, so that um, you know, if you're, let's say, in New York, and your car is in Los Angeles, um, it will find its way to you um, and meet you wherever your phone is. So the phone will just communicate with the car and tell you, tell, tell the car where to find you. Um, and it'll just automatically charge itself uh, along the whole journey. Um, so I, I think that, you know, like I said, I might be slightly optimistic on that, but not, not, I don't think significantly optimistic that we can do that probably in about two years. Um, so this is the first little step in that direction. And um, I think it's, it's quite profound to actually experience it, even though it is a baby step. Um, and then, in addition, we've made a number of refinements and improvements in the uh, in general autopilot. Um, and um, I, I, I think at this point, with 7.1 um, and with the enhanced fleet learning that comes with 7.1, um, we you know, will have to see what the statistics uh, say. But I, I, my, I, I believe that. We, um, it, it is probably better than human at this point in highway driving, um, uh, or it certainly will be as the fleet learning gets more and more sophisticated. Um, that, that that's actually been my observation um, when I've been testing the car is that um, it, it's certainly better than human at staying in the center of the, the lane uh, compared to other cars on the road. So. Um, I think that that's sort of quite quite exciting, um, and and if, if you know if, if it isn't quite better than human yet, it certainly will be um, in the coming months. Um, I think those are the two main things, um, and and of course the car can automatically parallel park with the tap of a button. It can also now uh, reverse park in. So if you want to back into a space, um, it, it'll it'll do that too, just automatically. Um, yeah, I think those are the main things. So we can just jump into questions then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for live Q&A. Just click the little raised hand icon at the bottom of the Q&A panel. First question is from Deanne Durbin from Associated Press. Thanks for taking the call. Hi, thanks for taking the call. Um, I'm wondering why the, the speed restrictions. Um, is there other particular things that happened <laughs> that made you decide to do that? Well, I don't think our speed, the, the speed restriction we introduced with 7.1 is particularly uh, arduous. Um, it's really just uh, capping the maximum speed on roads without a center divider at five miles above the speed limit or 10 kilometers above the speed limit in Europe. So, or in a place with the thing, oh, things are in kilometers. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it just means like on um, roads without a center divider where there's a potential for um, a more serious collision, uh, it kind of makes sense to not go more than maybe five miles above the speed limit. That's, that's really, that's the only restriction really. Um, I think that's quite reasonable. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention one important point, which is we've added curve speed adaptation to the autopilot uh, capability. So the car will um, look ahead to the oncoming curves and 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 reduce its speed, um, whereas previously in 7.0 it would maintain a fixed speed even if you went around a sharp corner, and now it will automatically reduce the speed. 
I think those are both quite important uh, safety announcements. And we have a question from Chris Perkins at Road and Track. Hey there. Um, with the, the the new summoning feature, it, is it seems more likely now that we'll actually see a, a production version of the uh, the evil robot snake charger. Is that something that you're that could reach production <laughs> in, the, in the near future? Um, yeah, we'll, yes, we will do some version of that. <laughs> we'll try to make it look uh, less creepy, maybe. Um, <laughs> I mean, it is fascinating. It's, it's sort of fascinating in its creepiness, um, yeah, I, agree. I think. Uh, but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think we'd, we'd probably roll it out first on some of the superchargers um, and um, and see how that goes. Uh, but I think it's, it's quite, yeah, quite interesting. Uh, I mean, but yeah, essentially, the car need, will, will need to sort of automatically charge, and so that that means the you need some sort of automated system on the charger side to connect. And we have one from Mike Balaban from Jalapenic. Hey, Elon, thanks so much for having us. Uh, I just have a quick question about you mentioned that in two years, uh, the car would actually be able to drive itself from New York to Los Angeles. And I'm just wondering, would that be limited to something like the Model X and Model 3, or would that be, would the Model S be able to do that from an over-the-air firmware update or something like that? Well, I mean, we do need more sensors than the car currently has to achieve that goal. Um, so this is partly a hardware, partly a software thing, um, because in order to do that really by itself, you need like a, you need a lot of redundancy, um, and um, you know more cameras, more radars, um, and, um, and like I said, the kind of redundant electronics, uh, redundant um, power buses and that kind of thing. So essentially to be, so that the, the cars fail operational, um, you know, it can, any system can fail in the car, um, uh, doesn't need to, to go to back up to a driver. Okay, so right, right now, the, the, the driver is sort of plan B if, if, uh, if, if something goes wrong with the electronics, it, it, it fails the driver. Um, and, and it, for, for that thing, it would need to fi fail to another set of electronics on the car. And we have a question from Nikki Gordon, Bloomfield Transport Evolved. Uh, good morning, Elon. Um, I was wondering if you would care to comment on the proposed legislation and what legislative changes that California is considering and how you view an importance of a nationwide standard for autonomous drive in the future. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. I mean, certainly it would be, um, it, it, would, it would certainly make things difficult if, if all states adopted separate standards or if, if there was a wide range of standards. So some consistency at the federal level, I think, would be, would be good, um, or at least for the states to coordinate their activity and and be fairly consistent in what they do. Um, otherwise, it's going to get pretty weird if if the, if the car's behavior has to change from when that went across the state border. Um, but um, I mean, so far, our conversations with the, the California Department of Transport and DMV have been quite positive, um, and they they do recognize that this is what's coming, um, and they just want to, I think, approach it in the right way. So, um, so I mean, I think I think the yeah, California has probably put the, from what I can see, the most amount of thought into the uh, into autonomous transport, and um, but they they do want to sort of regulate it. In, you know, you don't. I mean, for, for obvious reasons, you don't want um, kind of robot cars misbehaving <laughs> um, and, and doing crazy things. So I think that that uh, California just wants to make sure that there's been adequate uh, safety precautions. Um, before cars really go autonomous. And next we have a question from Mark Chidiak from Bloomberg News. Hi, yes. I, my question is regarding uh, this software update, and uh, it sounds like you feel like cars may be autonomous within two years. Is that fair, or is it is simply – I was just trying to get a sense of when we might see fully yeah, autonomous cars. I think so. Within two yeah, years? Yeah, I think it's <laughs> – I think it's sort of a tw call it 24 to 36 months. I mean, it's really, I'd, I'd be very surprised if it's beyond that point. Um, and uh, now that's, that, that's when it's technically possible for, for a generalized 
I think I'd be highly confident that there's a generalized solution for fully self-driving vehicles in that time frame. Um, so meaning, meaning it would work anywhere in the country as opposed to limited to a particular city or, or um, set of roads. Um, it, and and, and um, one also needs to set a, um, a reliability threshold or a safety threshold for self-driving uh, autonomous cars. Um, I, I think like in that 24, 36 month time frame, the 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 um, it, it, it will be able to drive on you call it virtually all roads um, at a safety level significantly better than human. And another question from Deanne Durbin from the Associate Press. I'm sorry, I didn't actually have another question. Um, I guess the hand was still raised or something, but I did want to ask. Um, uh, you can summon from your phone or from the FOB. The press release said the FOB, but I Correct. also heard you at the beginning talking about the phone. So which it's both or it's both, yeah. So it's you both, you can okay. you can basically do a coded key press. Yeah, you can do a coded key press on your key fob, um, or you can you can you'll be able to just pull down the um, the, the the quick action menu on your phone um, and and tap summon or park. And we have a written question from Daniel Sparks from Motley Fool. He, because he, uh, his question is, how long do you think it will take for the case to be very clear that the more autonomous-like features of autopilot, such as auto steer, to make a compelling case that Tesla is setting new standards in safety with this technology compared to human drivers? I think we'll probably be able to make some of those arguments this year. Um, I mean, the, the key is to collect um, uh, tens of millions or perhaps hundreds of millions of miles of driving, pro probably in the hundreds of millions um, of miles. And, and right now, uh, for cars that have the autonomous capability, um, we, we see about a million miles a day of driving. Um, and that, that number is increasing, obviously, uh, with each passing week uh, as, more, as the fleet increases. So what we're able to do is compare the false positives and false negatives um, over a, a, a statistically significant data set um, and say, okay, um, these are the cases where um, if, if the car had been in autonomous mode, um, it would have prevented an accident or, or conceivably this is a case where if, if it was in autonomous mode, it would have, it, 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 it caused an accident. Um, I should say thus far, the results have been very good, although it's still early in the in the in the data accumulation uh, period, um, and um, actually the, the 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 only cases that we're really aware of where um, that, that where there were some accidents is where in a couple of cases customers thought the autonomous driving mode was on, but actually uh, it wasn't. <laughs> um, so then they they thought that the, the autonomous driving caused the accident, but actually it was just that they thought it was on, but it wasn't. Um, that, that, yeah, that was a couple of cases. Um, but but no, no, no serious injuries or anything. Um, yeah, we have a question from David Baker, San Francisco Chronicle. Hi, I actually wanted to follow up on that last point there. I mean, you know, when you first put out the autopilot features, there were people posting their videos online of doing truly crazy, borderline stupid things <laughs> yeah. um, with the cars. Um, have you seen any cases where the autopilot did actually cause an accident, or is it only things where it's, uh, there's an element of human error there? Um, I'm actually not aware of any cases where the autopilot caused an accident. Um, it's possible that there may have been some small accidents that were that never that didn't reach me or were never reported to Tesla or something like that. Um, but um, no, I'm not aware of uh, actually of, of any. Uh, in fact, e even the cases where people did pretty crazy things, like um, you know, set the car in autonomous mode and then got into the back seat and that kind of thing. Um, oddly enough, none, none of those actually resulted in an accident that I'm aware of. Okay, and we have a question from Mike Ramsey from the Wall Street Journal. His question is, when will you build in new autopilot hardware into the Model S? 
Well, I mean, we don't want to comment on on future product transitions, um, but it's it's uh, it's not it's certainly not not immediately. Um, we, we are working on a new hardware suite, but it's um, it, it'll be some time before that enters production. All right, sounds like that may be. Sebastian okay. Blanco from Autoblock Green. Okay. Hello, yes, thank you, Elon. Um, what have you uh, figured out about insurance costs or insurance situations if the insured driver is not in the vehicle if something happens to it? Um, do you mean during the parking? Uh, well, I mean, in, in this case, it, it's, I would hesitate to call the parking a truly autonomous feature since you have to actuate it and the key has to be within a certain range. Um, it's more like a remote control feature at this point. Um, so, I mean, I guess the liability would be with the driver. And we do take, you know, we are, we are very clearly wanting that this is a beta feature. Um, you know, we don't, there are many different uh, parking garage scenarios and it's not, it may not work in all of them, so it's important for people using the summon and uh, and self park capability to um, stay inside of the vehicle and be prepared to tap the key if they see it's going wrong. So you can stop the auto park um, and summon function at any time just by tapping the key, um, and that's really what we strongly recommend at this point. Um, so so yeah, I mean the driver would be responsible for anything that 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 happens. Um, although I'm, I, I suspect there's going to be somebody quite rare when the, that there's any issues. They're like very rare. I mean, the, the, the car can even detect if um, like a fairly small dog walks past. So it's um, you know, it's not absolutely perfect, but I, I think it's you know probably probably better than a person right now, even. In, in, in terms, you say, look, what's the probability of having a little offender scrape, even with the beta version of Summon Auto Park? I think it's probably less than a person. And that's all the questions we have at this time. All right, thanks, everyone. Gentlemen, that concludes today's event. You may now disconnect your line.